Welcome to the Pokeballs podcast, everyone. My name is Lee, one of your hosts, and I'm joined by co-host live in person live here in person, this week. IRL podcast. Scott, how are you doing, mate? I am very good. We've had a great weekend so far. Has been good. It's a little bit different than the usual podcast, obviously. We are here at the European and National Championships in London, which is running this weekend. I've been commentating and Scott has been playing. So I've been having a great weekend, mate. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty wild. I mean, you know, <clears throat> you've been casting. How's it, how's it been? It's been really good, mate. Really good. Um, the event's been... It's just flown but over, though. The production value of this, like... Yeah. I mean, you know, for those who don't know, uh, the events, you know, they've always been good, but it feels like where we've had such an... In- like a large increase in numbers, like the production value just keeps going up and up. And, like, they have four main stages up for the production. They have Go, BGC, TCG, and Unite on the end. And it, was, it looks awesome. Like They've done like amazing. They've even got like down the middle of like all the tables, they've got like a victory road road that they've, they've made. And it's Back to the trophy. After the trophy, it's really cool. They've, they've yeah. like proper They've, made it they've done really well this year. Yeah, it's, um, it's very close to what we're... It's obviously not the same scale as Worlds, but it's, it's very close to Worlds. Uh, have you seen the Unite stage as well? Oh, mate, the Unite the stage. United it's stage. like a proper esports stage. Yeah, it, is it looks awesome. So, so. cool. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. It's just flown by, mate. I can't believe, like, this is Sunday morning when we're recording this. So we've got Championship Sunday uh, this afternoon, kicking off later with Pokemon Go, TCG, Unite, and then VG will be ending up. So we'll be finishing the day, and uh, it'll be be a lot of fun. So just flown by. It's been really fun. Um it's just like full on, like normal. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to Lee yesterday, like this is the first time I've actually, it felt like I've been to an event and the day's flown by. Like, normally these events, like they're brutal, right? I mean, we've been shattered yesterday. We mm. were so tired. And then Friday was the same. I just went home. But like normally it's a lot, it's a long day, right? You start at nine, you're sort of going to like eight, nine o'clock at night, like constant short, like lunch break. We had 45 minutes and you didn't even eat. You, know, you didn't have time to eat, but... I mean, yeah. Friday literally flew by. I had genuinely, I, I was so happy when I got home. It was just like such a good day. Like yeah. even the games didn't feel like, feel like they dragged. Like the opponents that I played were super nice, super friendly, um, got like some conversations going and stuff. And yeah, it was just like what Pokemon, playing Pokemon is all about for me. Yeah. You know, like the company, like seeing people that I hadn't seen in ages as well. Was just like this is this is what this is why I play the game. It's such a good event just for that. And like, if there's any one of you watching this and thinking, oh, I might like to to do that, there'll be one next year for sure. Don't know where it will be. Be in Europe. So I'll be in the You'll European in Europe. one somewhere. So, uh, but always worth uh, traveling out to if you can. Um, and you can get a ticket. Yeah, and the Pokemon Center as well. That was there. Um, oh. So that was that was very cool. But yeah. It's um, it's been it's been crazy, and I can't believe it's nearly over, mate. I can't believe it. But yeah, we still got one more day to go, one which more is day. very exciting. Championship finals, yeah, always good. We've got some good games lined up. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's very good. The reason why I don't eat though, mate, through events is it's the same reason when I'm playing a tournament. I feel like um, if I eat anything, and it doesn't matter, I've kind of experimented over the years with when I've been playing, like. I can eat like a high protein kind of meal or I can eat um, like with, with high protein, low carb, or I can eat just a carby meal of something standard or a high fat meal. None of that seems to work. And it, I always feel like very lethargic afterwards. And it's not like I'm eating like a pig and like being, you know, like, um, you know, uncle on or yeah. whatever. Like um, It's hard. Like it's weird. Like again, yesterday when I had lunch, it's weird how food just like eats you. Like I was so tired yeah. after eight lunch. And I just yeah. kind of don't want to risk doing that because you don't want to be tired in front of camera. That's what I feel, and I'm not. Sh- I don't feel as sharp or anything. I feel like it's not the best, and I would never advise anyone to do it. But just for me personally, I just can't eat. I like I'll keep myself hydrated with plenty of water and stuff. I can maybe have like a bit of fruit, like an apple or something, would be fine. But other than that, um, I never, I never tend to when I need to be like on the game. Um, so it's not that I didn't have. I did have time to grab stuff. I just never choose to. And then I just kind of like pick out like Naruto at the end of the day and then fall asleep. So, yeah, it's just just how my brain works, mate. Thinking about, okay, so if any of you have watched the stream, we've had some interesting moments. Lee's obviously been amazing. 
And um, Thanks, yesterday they had a really fun <laughs> segment, which we rewatched last night, about the pronunciation of Pokemon. It was so funny. It was, so I funny. mean, it was, <laughs> it was hilarious, to be yeah. honest with you, because, because of all like... There's always a hot. There's always a hot debate, right? How do you pronounce certain Pokemon? I mean, you know, you think back to when, um, you know, the uh, Tapu Pokemon come out, and you know, the Ultra Beasts, you know, Nihilego, right? How is it pronounced? Is it Nihilego? 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 Everyone was like, yeah. oh. and so you know, they, they introduced this fun segment where, like, how do you pronounce these Pokemon? And it was you, Lou, and Costa were up on stage, and honestly, it looked like they were having such a fun time. <laughs> it was, it was a lot of fun. As bad as I did through it, um, and my brain just went blank because I normally all right, like I'm not the best with pronunciations. I got my own way to say certain things, um, and I'm the first one to admit. But I never nitpick about stuff. Um, but yeah, I my brain went a bit spaghetti on stage yesterday, but it made for good entertainment and it was it was good fun. And you I get a chance, uh, you need to watch it. We might upload it to the channel. I what, think it's it's it, a. It was very fun. It was um, very fun. But there was a bit where um, I thought it was really funny. Um, Lou, one of the casters, she was like. She really likes Reggie Lecky and she was like, Oh, I found out this weekend that it's not pronounced Reggie Lecky, it's pronounced Reggie Lecky. And we were like, You just said the same thing yeah, twice. Costa's like, You just said the same thing twice. Apparently, it's pronounced Reggie Lecky. Reggie Lecky. Reggie Lecky, yeah. not Reggie Lecky. Yeah. And Garganical is meant to be Garganical. 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 Yeah. That's brutal, that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. But I mean, just just say it how you want. We know what you mean. I think you should go on stream today and just butcher all the pronunciations no. of all the names. No, I would like to work another <laughs> production. <laughs> I've already done enough butchering, so we'll see. Uh, no, so yeah, at least we don't have any um, pronunciations to worry about for another couple of years, at least till Gen Ten comes around, and then we'll have that. Uh, How's the new Pokemon to be like? Yeah, how do I new. Although the D DLC is coming around quite soon, so there'll probably be some new Pokemon. Uh, in that we know we've got a few new ones coming, which is uh, pretty cool. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the event itself, if you will, um, you'll be watching this, hopefully there was a giveaway over the weekend for the uh, Gavin Michaels Palafin. Uh, when this goes up, the event will have finished on the 17th. So it's actually the Monday. So there's not really much point of um, mentioning it, but you know, hopefully you did get it. If you caught any of the event, that was a nice mystery gift to mm -hmm. get as well as part of the event that was running. But if you did watch any of the streams over the weekend, be that for Go, TCG, uh, Unite or anything mm -hmm. like that, let us know what you thought of the event. It'd be great to get um, your thoughts on what your favorite. Mate, Unite was wild, man. Like people are probably screaming for that. The Unite fans are baller. They were popping off. And the, the commentators as well. The time. commentators had their... Oh yeah, the they little, the dazzled yeah. Yeah. Chinese they suits. Always, they always, always dress wicked. up for the occasion. They, yeah. I honestly think Unite has the potential to be bigger than everything, really, because it's like I think if the game was better, I think it would. I'm not bashing Unite, but I think there is an obvious problem with. It doesn't matter what you do in the early game; it feels like that it's, does require. It's, yeah, it's always decided by that, and I think if they do stuff to kind of maybe balance it out, did a you see a team one like? The team that won yesterday, one of the ones, I don't know if it's semi-finals or it was final or whatever, but they um, they literally, they dunked last minute as the time ran out and won by three points. Oh. Three points. That's what's they were exciting about it yeah. yeah. But what I quite like about Unite is that, like, compared to other MOBAs, it, they're 10 minutes. Mm. Whereas with, like, League and Dota, the games can run, like, you know, 40 minutes plus, even, like, an hour long, you know. Yeah. It's too long, but you know it's going to be, like, a 10-minute game with Unite. So that's why I think it has a lot of potential. Yeah. But, it keeps that excitement, doesn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. And engagement, and it's not, like, dragging on and anything like that. It is very, like, boop, 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 boop. That's why I like Pokemon Go, you know. I really like Go as a, a watching it because it's so fast-paced. Like, they had so many players, didn't they? You, you were telling me yesterday that they had a, record numbers. Yeah, I think it's the, the biggest attended event that they've had for goal, which is crazy. I think they had like 25 rounds or something like that, which is Brutal. madness. So yeah, cool, I mean, full nine was yeah. bad. Yeah. Uh, do you, best of three or best of five for goal? I'm not sure. I know the finals are like best of five, so I'm not sure if the earlier rounds are. Let us know if you play. I love watching it, though. You would think I should know more because I like watching it, but I'm not. I don't really quite quite much technical time. Because you have to learn. You have to learn to like, Terence was telling me you had to like, Learn to count their number of taps. So you know when the move's coming, and you have to count you know, how many taps you're doing yeah, as well. Imagine, like, yeah, it's very yeah. You have to like be on it. Yeah, there's but, a lot of layers to it. It's not just simply like bringing bringing Trevenant and just 
you know, rocking through the tournament or whatever. But um, yeah, it's really good. I like it. So yeah, there was that. There's this weekend, so that'll be over soon, which is pretty sad. But then there's more ICs coming up. Even the next one is NAIC, which would be in June, and then it'll be the World Championships after that. A bunch of regionals in between, of course, for all of these things, which is good. So that's a competitive circuit, and uh, yeah, just been an amazing weekend seeing everyone been at the venue and um yeah just enjoying things so hopefully you can get out if you were if you didn't get to come to this one you can get out to one in the future i mean i just want to touch on the pokemon center for their right so they did oh yeah yeah, yeah. they did a pop-up pokemon center for for worlds last year because it was held in london it's over in the xl uh xl arena and you know that was i mean you uh, they opened it from Thursday to Sunday, or maybe to Monday. I can't remember when it closed, but they opened it on Thursday, which they so, never yeah. did. They never did it on. They only opened it on Friday this year. But I mean, the amount of people, like just people coming in for the Pokemon Center, was was not so well. And even like now, like yesterday and today, like the amount of people that were coming in. Obviously, we were in there because we were playing, so we had the badge. You can see who aren't yeah. people that aren't playing because they don't. Well, have I mean, the badge, we went but, at what 10 a.m. this morning. On a Sunday morning, and it was rammed. It was yeah. rammed, mate. It like, I crazy. had to queue. I mean, put it into perspective, Wells last year, so you book a time slot, right, to get into the uh, to get the Pokemon Center. And we did it this year. At Wells, we sort of just walked straight in. You know, we had like a 12 o'clock slot on the Saturday. We said, like, oh, we'll go in. Um, got up, we walked around the queue. Then we didn't have to queue. They let us in. This one, we had to pre queue to get into the queue. It was like half an hour, 45 minutes just to get in. It was yeah, crazy that's, that's busy brutal. yesterday. That's brutal. And then yesterday, right? So this is wild. Okay, great story time. So I bought some um, trading cards yesterday. So I went in there and no self awareness, people. I was very, I was really <laughs> like, I was, you know, in the Pokemon Center at Worlds last year. I spent 180 quid, right? So I was worried that I was going to spend a lot of money. And I went in there and I was like, you know, I was a bit reserved. I was like. You know, I could get this, but I don't necessarily need to get it. You know, there's nothing in that that was really screaming, buy me. So I was like, oh. so I, I, I put a lot of things back. There was a few t-shirts, I was like, maybe. But then I went to grow, grab one thing, and there's only one left, and the guy took someone bought tickets. So I was like, oh. And then I went over to, like, the TCG section. And for those of you who don't know, I mean, Lee, as we've mentioned, Lee has a lot of cards. And he sort of got me into it as well. And when, when I normally buy cards, this addiction that we have, I normally buy sealed stuff, right? I keep it sealed. And so I never really get a chance to open it. So I was looking at the stuff, they had loads of single packs and they had they had these little um, booster bundles, Scarlet and Violet booster bundles, and I hadn't opened any Scarlet and Violet packs. And um, I was like, fuck it, screw it. Let's just, let's just get some, right? Um, just for fun, you get six packs in here for 24 quid. I almost put them back and bought singles because I was like, there's no way they're going to give you good hits in here, right? <laughs> there's no way. So you did it. Normally, normally if you fair. get singles, right? You know, you got a better chance because if you grab, you know, grab a few different ones from different places, you might get good pulls. But so last night we sat on the bed and I was like, it must have been like half 10, 11 o'clock. We were like, this, this, I forgot this, let's open them up. So sat on the bed, took the packs out, gave three to Lee, three to me, right? Start opening my packs, right? And for those of you who don't know, the chase card in this set, this is the, the base set Scarlet and Violet. So the first time they've changed it to the Silver Borders, very similar to Japan. Um, really like sort of the set, right? And it's the first one for Scarlet and Violet. And um, so the chase cards are the Miriam all art that they have. And then you also have the two Gold Star, Mariodon and Coridon. The full gold ones. The full gold ones, yeah. sorry. And then you also have the, uh, there's like a Coridon all art, arts, which is yeah. really sick. Yeah. And we're sitting there, right? So I'm opening the pack. So I go first. Well, we're kind of both open at the same time, but yeah. I'm a bit faster. I get my pack <coughs> open. Right, and I get to the end and I go, holy shit, I've pulled a Miriam. Right, and they was like, oh my God, that's like the rarest card in the set. That's the chase card. That's the chase card. And then Lee's like slowly opening his pack. I haven't seen it. There you go, you can have a look at that. It's gorgeous, man. Honestly, it's so nice. Very nice card. And literally, Lee's, Lee's in the middle of opening his, his pack. He gets to the last card and we hit an little oh, on card. <laughs> And, and, and we were like, these are like the two rarest cards in the set. How the hell? Yeah. How the hell did we, we hit this? There you go. It was literally back to back, yeah. like seconds. Like you can't make this stuff up. The fact that we open them back to back, and then also, I also got a Toxicroak EX as well in the same box, which is wild. And then for like Fido as well, and I was like, this is like the most. 
stacked box. Cracked you could, pack. <laughs> it was so cracked. So it was out of six packs. So good. Like I was saying, like you you wouldn't get that many good pulls probably from a booster. You get a lot of good pulls from a booster, but not that many of the rarer ones, I don't think. So yeah, it's a good box. So we went back this morning thinking, oh we'll get another Yeah, we'll get another one. They had none left. All gone. And the, the thing is, I nearly put this back. I, I was so glad I didn't put it back. Because I saw someone pick it up. And yeah, then I, yeah, I, I put thing, it back. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll just yeah. grab this. But they didn't have any. So um, we went and bought, I bought a mini tin that had Crown Zenith. And Lee bought some packs. And um, I got this okay. this morning. I got the full art Miriam. They got me the, the, the other Miriam. Yeah, so, so we both pulled Miriam. I actually packed it for him. So, you know, we got some mad pack luck this weekend, really. Yeah. Didn't get anything else other than that, but... That's uh, no, that Excuse was a nice me. little poll. So, um, and yeah. also we have these um, crazy good. The bags are also really cool. So we didn't get the yellow ones. So they did these. If you bought loads of stuff last year, as you know, they gave you these like bigger, larger, like yellow Pokemon bags with a picture on it, um, and they were really cool. I already have one. Mm. I'm assuming you already have one. Yeah. But this year for the smaller stuff, um, you know, they had these smaller bags which are really cute. So every time you bought something, you got one of these if you wanted one. So I've got two of these now. And a promo card That's really well. nice. And a promo card, which... Professor Willow from, Willow from... Professor Willow from Go. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. Really good, yeah. It's a nice... Like, really cool. I mean, in the past, like you said, like the Pokemon centers that they've had at like the World Championships have been so trash, right? Yeah. And I now mean, they've always been exciting, but they've always been quite enough. small. It's not like a Pokemon center. Like you would get... You in couldn't, Japan. Yeah, you couldn't like compare it to a Japanese po actual Pokemon Center, but now they're, you know, these pop-up Pokemon Centers are way more, I think, like from what I've seen, the Japanese Pokemon Centers, of course, you'll be able to say a bit better than me because you've actually been to one, but mm -hmm. they feel like they would be more in line with what you'd get in Japan, the amount of merch that you've got there. Well, there wasn't that much at this one. I was surprised it wasn't as big as the one at Worlds. Worlds was huge. There was an array of different stuff. This one seemed a lot smaller, but it makes sense. I preferred the stuff uh, in the World Shop. Yeah, I did. I did. And I think there was a lot more at the World Shop um, compared to this one, but it makes sense because it's smaller. You had the, world, the, the World's exclusive merch, which was obviously going to be yeah. better than like an EUI. And there's not as much um, exclusive merch for this one. You've got like the Eevee... Um, play mats and stuff like that and then the the the, the kind of the eevee and the evolution that was a stuff, they normally pick a theme like, yeah for like the events which i really like eevee this year you so. can't go wrong with the eevees and evolution so it's, it's pretty cool um so yeah all the exclusive stuff for the event was cool just not as much because it's not like the world championships but that's the theme for the uh the ic's this year which is really good so yeah um Anything else from the weekend? I feel like I was about to just skim over it, so I'm pleased you came came back. To no, I just think center. like you know, it was just it's a good time event. If you are mm. thinking about, you know, we'll sit here and bore you with all like the technical details and stuff. But if you are, you know, I met quite a few people yesterday who, you know, this was their first or second event. Yeah, you know, they've played in some before, but like if you can get a ticket, you know, come down and play. Like the community is so welcoming. Mm. Like it is lovely. Yeah. and I think the big thing about it is it's not. The, the main things are the competitive side of it, but it's not just for the competitive player. There is a lot to come for just a regular Pokemon well, fans, just to come and be a part of well, the This is a thing, event, right? Like, enjoy it, kind of meet other Pokemon fans, do the Pokemon Center, do the side events. Do There's so much going on the whole weekend. In you can play the side of like, say, like you mentioned, the side events. Yeah. They always have fun side events. Yeah. You can earn, like, pack, like, you get points from the side events. You can buy packs with them and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it's just good fun, isn't it? But, like, it's gone to a point now where, like, you just said you can come along and spectate and have a great time yeah. and when I went to Worlds last time it was a proper t the first time because I didn't qualify for Worlds I played in the um, they normally have an open there I played in that but for most of the time I was spectating and it's the first time I'd really spectated an event and it was amazing and like this time really you know yesterday obviously I wasn't playing I was unfortunately I didn't make it to day two um, so we won't be making it to the final but um, you know it is what it is but you know, I was going to say we haven't touched on how your tournament went. Actually. We can talk about that in a second. But you know, <laughs> um, I yesterday I just spectated and it was great fun. You know, yeah. got to watch you guys on the couch. You look like you're having a great time. All the games have been super fun. I think this format is super interesting. Mm. Um, Good viewing. So yeah, but no, I went five four yesterday. I went positive. We take those. Um, but as we said, as we've mentioned, without locals, it's. Without best of free practice, it's really hard to get a judge for your team, mm. no matter how much practice you do online. 770-something players, so there's a lot of players. So Yeah, yeah I think I come like 330th. Well. It's not bad, mate. It's not bad, I'll take Finish it about positive halfway. as well. Finishing so, positive is really good, so... 
that's I'll take a, that. That's a plus. So. We'll take it. Yeah. All day. All good experience. And the main thing is you had a good time as well. No, so. honestly, I get to spend time with you. I get to meet. Again, the, the biggest thing with events is that, like you see people you don't necessarily see outside yeah. of events because, you know, people come from all over, right? So, you know, I've got a lot of friends that live like two, three hours away and it's really hard to get, you know, mm. to spend. If they don't live in London, and obviously London's, you know, a lot easier to get commuting into for a lot of people. But if yeah. they don't live there, they're in the middle of nowhere. Like, you know, it's hard to see them. So you only see them at events. So it's always fantastic. And that's, that's one of the reasons I keep coming back. So it is that and the community is just like, yeah. great. That's it. Right, that is EUIC stuff out the way and mm -hmm. uh, for another year, sadly. But we'll um, hope you've enjoyed this little recap, of course, of this. We've got plenty more on the pod today to talk about, though, because there's been still a lot going on in the Pokemon world outside of EUIC, as busy and as hectic as that's been. We had the first episode of the brand new Pokemon anime start this past week which big was deal. in japan big deal. and a big reveal as well of um uh kind of a hint at a uh pokemon that's pre evolution been, for the well, uh, uh, yeah to pegos the, um, the turtle pokemon that's been um uh in the indigo disc dlc pack it is like the the pokemon on the front there which is the um you know how to be the one behind terrestrialization the one that uh is on top of the the, uh, Heath drew that picture in the um, the Scarlet and the Violet books. And it is supposedly that Pokemon. So the uh, the baby form or the pre-evolved form, we don't well. know, was in the first episode of the anime, which is crazy. So maybe we get some news soon about the DLCs, about you the Pokemon. So, right. um, yeah. And I think now as well, touching on it, I don't know if we mentioned last week about the Typhlosion terror raid that um, started over this weekend, which is running over this weekend as well. With that, you feel like it's the, you know, we've had the Hisuian start a kind of Pokemon. They're not the Hisuian ones, but they are, you know, they're normal forms of the Hisuian Pokemon. So you'd feel like now we've had the Typhlosion. It feels like it's come to an end with this, like, cycle of seven-star raids. Is home around the corner as well. Yeah. Pokemon home compatibility so we can get everything in from there. They said early 2020. They did say in. early. We're now in April. May is not early. May is not early. That is mid. That is Q2, my friend. Yeah, Q2, definitely. Q2. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I do feel like there has to be something. We know we're getting that update in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in regards to the Walking Wake, Iron Leaves, um, Bad Egg Glitch. We talked about that oh, briefly. My, so oh. that's coming at the end of April. Is yeah. that update going to be a fix for the glitch with the bad eggs so people can catch it again. We know we're going to get that event back again, which will be the next event after the Typhlosion raid has its second phase. That update will drop. Is that going to be the update where we're going to get Pokemon home? Hopefully. Hopefully. You would hope so. Just talk, talk to you quickly. I do agree with you. But going back to the story I was telling you earlier. So, as you all know about these glitches of people losing their safe. Oh, yeah. Right. This is actually oh, my God. funny. So, bear in mind, so I got my ticket. You have to pay for ticket to go to EYC. So, you know, I've been well excited to play, you know, obviously, as we've mentioned. And um, so, you know, I've been building my team and practicing. And I'm like, Sunday, I go on, boot up my Switch, click on the game, and it goes, welcome to Pokemon. Please choose your character. And I was like... <laughs> I was like insta panicking. Like I had my phone in the hand. I was about to like ring Lee. I was like, "What the fuck? What the hell is going on, man? Like, please, please, don't let this be true. Like, have you got a spare card? Like, I was literally <laughs> just about to go mental, and then I realised that I'd signed into the wrong account on my Switch, and I was like, oh, heart rate went back to normal pace. Oh, I was like, the, the safe day I had page. a massive panic attack. <laughs> I was so worried. That would be horrible. I but, do still think like if I ever shut down my game, I just put it in sleep mode, but I do. If I ever shut it down completely and then when I reopen it again, I think, is this the time that I'm going to get that error? Is it going to... It's horrible to have that thought. I know it's a very slim chance, but, you know... That... You were saying it's really weird that Pokemon are able to like, get yeah, that... Yeah, restore it. Restore the data. Quite a few Japanese players uh, where they've contacted Nintendo and um, they've sent, like, across the internet, they've sent their save data to them and then, and then when it's been sent back to their Switch the saves being restored so it, it is possible to get that save data back and hopefully players that have experienced these issues i covered a video on it you can contact nintendo support and then uh, you'll have to do like, it directly nintendo can't get like bodied at the moment like you know how they yeah. don't like they're a very funny company they dm say everything stuff like that 
with the new laws in like Europe, the um, the right to repair laws for Europe could basically force. I think it's happening them to repair any Joy-Con drift. Oh, they are, aren't they? That, yeah, they have to do it. They have to do it now. Where they had to. You, I've got. I've got a couple of Joy Cons that are just brutal. I sold yeah. mine, my original Joy Cons, back. So I bought my Switch in Japan, and back in 2019, back when we were doing stuff on the channel, way back, we did some Mario Kart stuff and yeah. stuff. I was getting mad Joy Con drift, so I had to sell them, and I bought a second-hand pair of Joy Cons from CX, and it, it's so bad that they've just been managed to get away with it. Like it's, it's like such a common problem. It's not like it's a few. Like it's like the biggest problem they've had with the Switch. Yeah, I think and they just got away with not having to do anything. Yeah, it's crazy. I might actually, it's a hassle sending them off, but I might do it with mine. I think one of mine, the issue I had with mine was they had the Joy-Con drift. So um, I actually was fortunate enough to have a, a, another Switch at the time. So I just ended up using that. And then I got a Pro Controller, so I just ended up using that and not using the Joy-Cons at all. But the original Joy-Cons from that first Switch, one of them, the battery died, died on it. So I, I literally couldn't charge. It wouldn't even plugged into the switch. Wouldn't charge up. What? So I was like, I watched a video of uh, some guy that was like, if you get this issue, you can buy this charging dock for the Joy Cons, and it's like ten ten pound off Amazon. So I bought that, and it does charge. But the two older Joy Cons that I've got, because they like depleted and for some reason even plugged into the switch when it's docked, they won't charge them. It, they won't even start to charge because they're just dead. And I'm like, well, what do I do now? I've just like got this charging dock that's really pointless and my Joy-Cons don't work, so I might send those off. So, yeah. If anyone's done it, though, let us know how you got on, how long mm -hmm. it took. Probably a month turnaround, right? I know the guy, that the, the first guy that uh, released his kind of story about getting his save data back on Scarlet and Violet, uh, he had to send his Switch off to Nintendo. Oh. So he packaged it up, sent it off to them, and they sent it back and said there's no there's no fault on the the system that they could fix. And then it wasn't until he kept chasing it up, then uh, he managed to get them to uh, get them to. So he sent them his save data that was on the switch, um, and then they took that. And then I think two weeks later they sent it back to the save data. It must back be a him. problem with the switch. Or like reading the save file. It's definitely that last update. It. It's yeah. definitely that last update. One hundred percent. There's something in that 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 must. I don't know. It's such a rare occurrence. It's just bizarre though. that it's not affecting everyone. Yeah. Um, but you know that that do be how it the works. The good news sometimes. is though that it's recoverable. So yeah. But yeah, the Tapegos baby in the anime. Baby Tapegos. Yeah, I did yeah. see it. It is. It'll be interesting to. Uh, I mean, it, it does feel like you know in the coming <coughs> weeks we will start to. Hopefully ramp up, especially with home coming out, the rumors for the DLC, because we haven't really had anything, have we? Not had anything since Pokemon Day, since that Bizarre. Um, presents. So you know, Especially if it's coming in September or potentially earlier, you know, you'd think we'd have something. Well, it's weird as well, because the dates for the DLCs, we've touched on it in previous podcasts, you know, the dates on the presents when we, we had that, the dates kind of indicated that it would be um, fall and winter mm -hmm. this year. But if you go onto the eShop, it's um, late 2023 for the first DLC pack and then early 2024 for the second DLC pack for the Indigo Disc. So best guess, who knows when we're going to get the DLCs for Scarlet and Violet. I reckon they just gave themselves a bit of breathing room because they've had some problems. Maybe. I reckon they planned to release it the same as before, but it was like, we've had so many problems, let's just stagger it. Maybe. Uh, yeah, and maybe they need to get it. Yeah, maybe there's issues that they want to make sure there's nothing else wrong before they do throw it out. I think that's probably one of the reasons why Home's not out yet. Um, but who kn who knows? Because we don't get any communication directly about of this. We don't. So it's uh, speculation all around for, for all that stuff, which is yeah, just kind of normal. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll report on it. Hopefully, we'll have some news soon on those. But that's exciting. Uh, the new anime, I don't know when it's due to come over to the West, but it'll probably be later this year. Uh, other things we've got, we've mentioned the Palafin. There has been a new uh, distribution as well. Mystery Gift Drop for Scarlet and Violet, a bunch of things. Uh, there is, yeah, it was actually um, decent, wasn't it? It's not too bad. There's like three different cards, um, and they're all running until like the 2nd of October, so it's a really long time. So even if you get in the game... Uh, later this year if you haven't already bought it you're still going to be able to receive these which would be quite good to get like the start of your game so there's uh 10 uh rare candies that you can get and that is called level up 
uh, there's five max revives, which is revive mm -hmm. chord, and then there's five nest ball, dive ball, dusk ball, timer ball, quick ball, and luxury ball, no love which balls. is no, no, no I'm not going to give those out freely. They did for the Valentine's Day. That was know? good to be fair. I got those. I think that was actually good. Yeah, that was good. And that's catch by ball. So I'll put the codes up over this if you are wanting to get them. Um, and they're available, like I said, until 2nd of October. So you've got plenty of time in game to take advantage of those. So that was a little oh. drop over the weekend that we had for Mystery Gifts. Uh, the Typhlosion seven star raid event uh, was running. Um, the raid builds. How did it go? I mean, we had a lot of positive comments. Um, for Rigorath, man, coming in clutch. Yeah, it's a good saw. idea. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. And yeah. it was even mentioned on a certain large card channel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether it was hint, a hint to your channel or not, but you know. Maybe. Maybe, but you never know. No, the photograph. I, I, I thought it would work. It would. It did. It, it all hinged. The skill swaps all hinged on how uh, the Typhlosion interacted with its its shield, um, and obviously it was a bit of a hiccup with. But you thought more else. You, you were the one people that thought me Asgard would be really good, right? I thought me Asgard would be good, but so stay that. tuned for later this week when it comes back because I'm going to show you all. How Meow Scarada is going to be the best to use in this raid. I've figured it out. The skill swap Meow Scarada works, and I've got a way to make it work. Even though, because after turn two, it nullifies all your abilities, sunny days and eruptions. So for that turn, you don't have the, the flash fire. Yeah, so yeah. you just get nuked. Yeah, but... And then when you come back, you can't skill swap again because the Typhlosion has overgrow. So you're kind of stuck. The, the key with the skill swap is to make sure that you don't faint. But I've got a way. Make sure that Mia Scarada, even though the, the, the ability is nullified, I'm going to sit on it for wait, the, the second phase. I can't wait to see. And all these people were like, don't use a grass type. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, what you can have you fun about? using your favorite style of Pokemon, beat the Typhlosion, and it is, it's pretty effective. It's just as good, if not better, than the Furigraph. But the Furigraph was good. Obviously, uh, Annihilip, again, is just a, an easy pick for people. It, it's so funny that, like, you know, when you when you first made that video on your channel, where it's like, Annihilip's so good for 6-star Terra Raid. It's still good for 7-star Terra Raid. It's well. so good for everything, isn't it? It's surpassed The Rage like Fish stuff is just so yeah. good. First off, it was Iron Hands. Iron Hands, just an absolute unit. Right, so many people... So, for those of you who don't know... Lee made this short way back at the beginning when Iron Hands was good. It was like a week or two into after the games had dropped. So, so, so I, everyone, every, everything was new. We were no like, one oh had figured God. anything out, really. No, no. So Lee was like, Iron Hands obviously great, right? It has great stats, great bulk, gets Drain Punch, and it gets Belly Jump. So I was always like, this is a great one for raids. Yeah. And w w after like a month or two after the game, when obviously Iron Hands was no longer great, <laughs> for, so we had we would get so many comments being like. Please stop telling people to run Iron Hand. <laughs> I get so many people in my raids like, bro, you actually look when this was made. This was made like months ago. Yeah, that's the problem, you know. And people think it was uploaded like last week sometimes when they see it on their shorts feed. And I'm like, no, because it has like nearly a million views. Really? It's not like 800k now. Wow. So it's like, yeah. It's not wrong though, it's just not 100% correct, but it, it depends was very on the early on. Pokemon. Exactly. Yeah, Terror Raids are different. Uh, it depends on the Pokemon that you're going up against, but Iron Hand's always a good choice. But coming back to Annihilate, mate, Annihilate just feels like it's going to work in pretty much most things. It does so well in most raid events. The Rage Fist's so good because it just continually powers up, so it doesn't even matter if you get knocked out. It's keeping that, it's retaining that power boost. So the base it power keeps it still. Yeah, for the entire raid. So even if you faint the Rage Fist. Does it uh, max out? 300 base power. <laughs> with Stab on top of that. Then you can Terrasalize, and then you get the increased. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty powerful. Um, it's uh, it's a good way to just, if you've got an Annihilate, may as well just use it if you don't want to. I like building different things for the raids. That's why I like using different things. Um, What's well, weird, right? Because you get... As we discussed earlier, you know, you get a lot of heat. You get a lot of heat sometimes for your pre-builds. Yeah. But like, I don't think, you know, obviously I'm going to be a bit biased, but I mean, from your perspective, I mean, you, you never say these are what, you always give, for starters, you, you never say these are definitely going to work. And also you give multiple options. Mm. So I think it's fun. It's fine to spectate, like, or... It's a big part of it, isn't it? Yeah, like speculate, speculate, sorry, because yeah. it builds hype for the, um, the yeah. rates. And, you know, yeah. of course, you're not going to know until the raid comes out, but it's always fun. People love speculating. I mean, look at people make money just on rumors on their channels and stuff. So yeah. for anything. So, you know, it's just, just a bit of fun, really. You so have a lot of choice. someone, though, that it upsets. So 
Well, the majority of people enjoy it, so that's the main thing. Yeah, they do work as well. Like, yeah. you get a few comments being like, why are you doing this? These don't work. Like, they do. <laughs> they clearly do work. Most of them do work. And uh, we have the, the follow-up videos after the events go live, I always thoroughly test stuff. So, you know, that's the one where I'm like, okay, this is what we did during the week. This is the one that I think works. There we go. And let's go. It's just to try and make it a bit easier for people that are doing the raids, you know, because not everyone has, like, um, a background in... And I'm not saying it's because I played competitive for so many years, but I do have a lot of knowledge on how uh, Pokemon like works. So I try and apply that with the builds when I'm putting things together, speculating what will work. And I think you know that experience does definitely help with with the raids and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I enjoy doing it, mate, and it's uh, it's good. Put my yeah, head... really good videos. Yeah, thanks, mate. Very kind of you. So you even had a couple of comments, people coming up to you and be like. I've had some, I met some really nice people this weekend at the events so of any of you were the people that I met watching this. It was great meeting you. Yeah, and really nice, really positive. And uh, it's always nice to meet people um, and just kind of like see what they're into in the Pokemon world and um, yeah, just get any feedback on, on videos and stuff like that. So it's awesome. It's really, really privileged. Um, I feel privileged. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always nice, mate. It's always really nice. Uh, no, yeah, it's great. I'm not the best at receiving uh, comment, like uh, compliments. I am terrible at receiving compliments. It's hard, isn't it? Because it's hard to be uh, like. Well, you can say obviously acknowledge it, but like you don't want to be arrogant. I'm it's really. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm so good. No, I could never do that, and I'm always very, I'm always very judgmental on myself. So I put a lot of. Um, I'm never. I never. I never compliment myself about anything. I always kind of judge myself really like harshly and I always think I could be doing things better. What did I do wrong there? Um, so yeah, personally for me, like I'm not, I'm not the best at uh, acknowledging things that have been good that I've done. Um, and I don't, I don't ever really boast about it. I don't know. It's not me. I mean, do I boast about stuff that I've done? I mean, when I'm not messing around, I mean, sometimes <laughs> if I'm messing around, just being a, no, you know, no, you're very jock, uh, jocking about, yeah, but, very reserved. Um, um, yeah, I don't like to, um, just not me, mate. But um, do you? Yeah, just do, do you? Yeah. Um, there's another global challenge as well coming up this weekend. I'm going to throw that in. If you are playing uh, anything online, you can play three games and you will get the prize uh, for playing in it. This week, the last time it was um, on, it was a P Pokeball bag. That you got for the three games. Yeah, it's pretty cushy. This time around, it is. I'm really hoping when the DLC back. comes out that they introduce some of the good customization options for the characters because the outfits are so bad. They have to though, and the, got him, man. I'm gonna be so upset if they don't. The teal mask. It looks like we get new uniform anyway, so it'll be a bit of a change. They did the same in Sword and Shield. Uh, the customization was a lot better in Sword and Shield, but we did get, you know, when we went to the Isle of Armor. Uh, no, we didn't get a new outfit in the Isle of Armour. We got a new outfit in the Crown Tundra, didn't we? We got the snow suit, which was different. But it looks like from uh, the, the overall art and things like that, from uh, the DLC information that we got, it looks like we're going to get those kind of uh, Camino uh, suit things, which is pretty cool. So we might there might be some more Cheeky. options there. It'd be cool if we got to wear... Imagine if your character could wear those masks that we, we've kind of been teased in that trailer as well. So you could have like a cool little mask on your trailer because we've already got that... Helmet that everyone wears, right? So yeah, the, the weird, the Daft Punk helmet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it'd be cool if we could have like the masks and things, and like then little things like that. Hopefully, yeah. But like I say, global challenge. Uh, you need to go into the rank ladder. You can register right up until the tournament starting, which will be on the Friday, the same time as the Terror Raid event for Typhlosion Phase Two will be starting. Uh, you can register right up to um, a minute before the event starts. Uh, at midnight UTC. Um, and then if you do and you play three games, you don't need to win them. You just need to play three games and you will get yourself a great ball bag, which is a little customizable feature in Scarlet and Violet. So that's running. And there'll be cons there'll be more running, I think, every other week for the next couple of weeks, uh, for the next month. So there'll be two more after this one. And they're all kind of coinciding with uh, the official tournament for VG as well as the qualifiers for the Japan national circuit as well so that is all going on so we'll keep you up to date with everything as and when they come out uh, I was going to say something I've completely lost Chandelier's coming to Unite Chandelier oh yeah I saw that Chandelier's coming to Unite which is pretty exciting I like Chandelier it's looks, a great Pokemon. Looks like a Tarantula as well, isn't it? It does look like a Tarantula. That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> Mate, fire. Imagine a, sh like a chandelier. chandelier on top of a chandelier. Yeah. 
be cool. On this chandelier, maybe, man. maybe it's, it's not in Scarlet and Violet. They were like, we can't have this. <laughs> we can't have double chandelier. <laughs> it's a shame. I like chandelier a lot. It's really cool. It has a really cool shiny as well. Yes, it's like red, isn't it? Like orange. Orangey, yeah, like, yeah, like, like fire. fire yeah. Um, I don't know what else has been going on this week. Pokemon Go, I haven't really heard much more about the, um, about the drama going on. But the, the problem is, I, we had some really good responses on the last podcast from people that were, you know, uh, suffering from the decisions being made by Niantic to change oh, yeah. these raid passes and things. So thank you so much to everyone that did leave comments um, and reach out to us from the last podcast. And hopefully the movement that you can see happening in the community does have some impact. If there's anything we can do on the podcast here, 100%. To get information out to help that, um, please let us know in the comment section below because we are fully behind that and um, helping make it more inclusive for everyone because it's it's just not it's not cool. I did actually speak to someone. So some of our friends were playing Pogo uh, yeah. during the weekend because they had obviously like they had a, loads of Pokemon stops and stuff mm. and some raids going on this weekend. Um, they always do it for events, so it's always a good time. You know, even just coming off that, you know, yeah. if you like Pokemon Go. Um, and I was speaking to someone who plays it quite a lot, and he was like, it's like, yeah, it is, it is really bad. You know, like, I used to do them quite a lot because I live in the middle of nowhere, as we mentioned, as like one of the main points for it. if you live in the middle of nowhere. It meant you can just host a raid and, you know, invite someone from America, mm. or anywhere in the world. You know, it is really jarring for those. Yeah. We had a few, like, disabled people comment on the video saying, yeah. like, this is, like, really bad for me. Like, I can't play the game that I enjoy now. Yeah. It's really affected me, so... And I feel really bad because I kind of overlooked that aspect of it. And like, just a bit naive, I think, on the first podcast when we mentioned it. And I think, man, yeah, it's, it's not... So, someone mentioned that... Um, they're, they're, someone on the comments was mentioning that... They, had, they basically had a theory saying that the, the lease that they have, because they rent the rights from Pokemon, right, mm -hmm. Niantic, yeah. is running out. And apparently they're going to release their own kind of Pokemon Go clone. Because they obviously they have the data, right? They also have a similar game. Yeah, which that, was the, the the base model for Pokemon Go and yeah. all the Pokestops. But apparently yeah. they, they, they have like a similar version coming out and they're just like trying to screw Pokemon over before their... This was the guy's theory before they release their own one. Not be Pokemon though. I think the biggest appeal to it is it's Pokemon. The players that play Pokemon got yeah, they're not going to play. Yeah, doesn't make a lot of sense. They're like, not just going to bin it, are they? No, and it may be better if Pokemon actually just take it over and it's not Niantic anymore, and then maybe get another developer in to work on. Like if that lease is gone, and say we're taking this back, we've got the base software, we'll give you payout. I don't know how it would work, and then Pokemon take it over and get another developer to kind of run it in in place because all the groundwork's there. And that might be the solution. But Pokemon Go is not going away anytime soon. No, I mean, it's yeah. So big. So big. So big. So big. So good. So big. It I just remember be. when it came out, man. It was so popular. Oh, it was so good. I still love it now. I just don't really have the time. And mm. like I say, I live in the middle of nowhere. So I do suffer from that. If you lived in London, it would have been amazing. Oh, right? oh, or any so big good. city. Yeah. I you always, have I always envy stop. those people. Like, I've been to friends' houses before and they've literally got a poker stop outside their house. <laughs> So they can just be like, ping. Yeah, in the village we used to live and we had one in our village. And we'd be like, sick. That's where I live now, mate. I've got one poker stop in the end. I, like, I have to walk 20 minutes. It's near the, the local shop. And I walk 20 there. minutes? Yeah. So I walk to the local shop. I can get the poker stop. There's one gym there. So if I walk up there, I can put my Pokemon in the gym. I'll come back the next day. There'll be another. It'll be gone. But I'll get some coins for it. But that is literally like, if I was stuck in the, that village, it would be... That's all I would have access to and nothing else. And it's not like you can do a raid on your own, you know? You need you need friends to do raids with. So um, I need to find out who those other, those other people are that are putting their Pokemon in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? We'll team up. We'll team up and do it. That would be good. Um, yeah, so hopefully things keep getting, like, well, hopefully there's some movement on that and there's some improvements made to Pokemon Go. Uh, Pokemon Stadium came out on Wednesday through last week, so that is now live in, in Pokemon Switch World online. Um, As we mentioned, I don't think there's just... It makes me wonder when Home come out, are they going to be like, oh, you can't just with Pokemon now? It just seems such a weird... Yeah, I don't There just wasn't Pokemon, any hype for it. No, it kind of... Um, it was a little bit sad, really, because it's such a good game. The minigames are cool. Minigames are very cool, but, I mean, that is probably the biggest kind of draw for it. 
because you can't tra- trade in your Pokemon, um, and the rental Pokemon are just just garbage, really, because the the sets aren't very good. Um, it is a challenge, of course. So if you like a challenge and you like playing with um, some of the more fully evolved Pokemon with bad sets and not as effective moves, or if you want to use like middle evolution Pokemon or whatever, you can do that. But it's not it's not quite the same as using your own Pokemon. And that's the whole thing. Like I was like when I heard the announcement, I was like, I can't wait to play through Pokemon Red again. So you just build teams so I can transfer Pokemon into it and then you realize, oh yeah, can't do it. So, this is yeah. talking about that, we were talking last night. We went out for some drinks and spoke to to some friends. There's the guy on YouTube that recreates teams that have won. Oh um Blessy, is it? I'm Blessy, I think. Yeah, so basically... I think that's his channel name. Great content now. What he Great does content. is, so he will find competitive teams that have done well in games. Let me just check. Uh, like in tournaments and stuff. Uh, so he'll go back and look at tournaments for like Red and Blue, uh, you know, like Ruby and Sapphire, like on the old games and see what teams did really well and then play through the games to see how long it takes to get the, t- the team competitively. Yeah, and like I he said, blessing. backing like, was it like red and blue? They had to like play the games multiple times because... No, it was, was, it um, it was the Journey Across America uh, episode. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. He re- re- recreated the winning team from the Journey Across America, which is like 2005 or 2006. Uh-huh. Could be wrong. But yeah, in a combination, the, the winner had to buy seven games. It was across seven games. So it was Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald. Then it was Fire oh, Red, Leaf, Leaf Green. Green, then Colosseum, and then Gales of Darkness. So there were seven games combined, and he had to play through them multiple times because TMs back then were one use. So he had to play through them multiple times. Yeah, to explosion get on two Pokemon. Yeah, so you had to play through, I think, Gales of Darkness, and it was, I don't know if it was, I want to say around like eight to ten hours of play just to get that, to get that TM. So you had to do that twice. <sighs> Brutal, brutal. But this, yeah, this. Uh, I am blissy. I am blissy. Recreate. Yeah, I am blissy. I'm a blissy. I'm a blissy. I'm a blissy. That's it. Yeah, recreates these teams like, as in how they would have to do them and sees how long it would take them to do it and creates a video about them. Very entertaining. Very interesting as well, especially for the older generation stuff. But, um, red and blue. I mean, was. I don't, I don't really know much RNG stuff in red and blue, but I know they, they had, they didn't call them IVs back in red and blue and yellow. They were DVs and they ran. Bro, from, imagine if they did like they ran from one to fifteen or side like, events on like Game Boys competitive. Exactly. Could you imagine just like a tournament, a tournament? Yeah, or on stadium, just like a proper old school would be yeah. wicked. They could do it on stadium now because it's on the Switch. Yeah. So all they need is the integration with these classic people, games. Yeah, people will be all over it. Yeah, and you could do it on Pokemon Stadium 2, you could do it on Stadium 1, you could re- you know, re-release um, Pokemon Battle Revolution for the Wii, have a Wii simulator on the Switch, and then do them on like um, Pearl and Diamond. There's like just scope for so much, mate be great be great i would definitely i'd be all over that yes yeah, so would i yeah it'd be sick mm. they have like, the pokemon ip as we mentioned just have yeah. they just have they hit you with the nostalgia right when you're young they hit they get you in when you're young and then when you're older you get hit with the nostalgia it doesn't matter who you are right yeah. most people play pokemon games you know and they just i mean it's all the amount of people that are in the pokemon center man these people will probably just i had a little because i went i went in on um what day was it? Friday. I had a break during uh, the, the the stream, so I was like, I'm gonna pop out to the Pokemon Center just to check it out. So I went along, and I was just walking around. I had no intention of buying anything because I was like in the middle of the um, production day. So I thought I'll just go and check it out, see what's happening, see the vibe, see what products are on, things like that. So I went in, and uh, obviously all suited and booted. I was walking around, and this this little kid comes up, and he's like, "Do you know if they sell old Pokemon games in here?" And I'm like. They probably don't, but um, I don't think they do. They might have Scarlet and Violet, though, in here, because I'm like, and then I'm, like, clocking on. This kid thinks I work here. <laughs> and I like, and then, yeah, I know. And then his dad came up as well, and um, I was like, yeah, I'm really sorry. I don't know if they do. Maybe ask one of the, the guys in the, um, I think they had, like, yellow polo shirts on that day. I was like, maybe ask one of the, the, the guys in the uh, the yellow polo shirts uh, if they've got any of the, the 
the again section, which I don't think they do. But um, then he just laughed and he's like, oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. And <laughs> kind of realized, and I was like, yeah. But no, uh, the vibe was good. No, old Pokemon games, though. Imagine they could do it. They could do it. They could easy create old Pokemon games again, couldn't they? Get them into on production. Old school, on old school stuff. Re release the Game Boy, GBA. People would be all over that man. mate they would sell they it's like a they would be a cash printing machine wouldn't it they already print cash so they, they just, just use the cash doing... that they already print to yeah. make more cash yeah they just need to do like a limited a limited edition uh game boy game boy special edition like 20 that what will the next anniversary be the 30th anniversary 30th anniversary here's your idea game freak nintendo 100 pound game boy re-release the game boy all over that 30th anniversary edition with with Original classic cartridges as well. Get the production back in. Be good, wouldn't it? Original cartridges. Oh my god! I wonder when the copyright runs out on those games because you know copyright only lasts on ten things years for certain things, yeah. And where you could be like, okay, well, we can create this like now. We can recreate this because the copyrights run out, and Nintendo aren't going to do it. But we could, you know, someone could come along and say, well, let's let's do it because there's obviously. There was people out there that would buy them. I mean, look at the second-hand market where, you know... I've got an original Game Boy. I bought one, like, five or six years ago. Like a blue one. It's like Game Boy Color. It's awesome. Yeah. They're cool, right? I mean, on the train on the way down, I was was playing Crystal on my Game Boy Color, and I was like, this is is amazing. I love it. So small as well. It's crazy. Just a quick story I forgot to mention. So... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So on the train on the way down, right? So (coughs) before, I was telling the story. So once at London Bridge Station, like... When in, in the UK, when you go like when you go off a train, you have to go for a barrier that shows you paid for a ticket, right? And it's like a little door system. You put your ticket in, or you scan your phone, your Oyster card, or whatever your card, and it opens and then it closes as you go through. And um, so once I was at London, and I was walking through like busy time. I had a backpack on. I walked through. They closed on my backpack. And I'm like flailing, right? And there's loads of people staring at me. And I was like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. And I was like, the only way I could get out because it had like squished my, squished my backpack in so tightly was to like, I had to climb out of the backpack and then yank it out. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. And so, so on the way down, right, on, um, on uh, yesterday morning, literally as I got off the train at London Bridge, I was like, oh, do you remember that time I got stuck? In the ter- like in, in the little doors and like so I go down go down to the tube tap my thing through go to walk through boop, on my backpack again and I'm literally yeah. sitting there gobsmacked because I was like I literally thought about this like a minute ago and this <laughs> happened to me again and I'm like oh my god and so I try to I try to take my backpack off again but the doors like get tighter and tighter and like, I can't move my arms and the guy behind me was like please can you try and open the door and then it, it, didn't, it didn't work and they had to call someone over and there's like oh loads of people behind me because it's on the bridge station and I was like oh my god I was like oh thank you and I like run away I was so embarrassed <laughs> second time mate second I can't believe I haven't twice twice that's hilarious I'd have loved to have seen that <laughs> if you really me yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Good story. Good story. Good memories. Let's see if it can happen a third time. Oh. Third time. The trains are terrible on the way down for me, but that's another story for another time. Um, what was it talking about? The uh, yeah, the, the classic things. We were talking about uh, Pokemon Stadium. Uh, so that's out now. Um, let me know if you've been playing it. Um, I think that's it, to be honest. Really. Other than that, not like a great deal going on this week. Hopefully we'll we do, get do some, some news. I reckon. Yeah, I think this week, I think we'll get... Because you've got to think, we mentioned it on the last pod about the update. It's coming at the end of April. So we're going to have the second phase of the Typhlosion raid, which will be on... Well, it'll be next week. I can't bring... I can never bring my calendar up in this. Oh, there we go. Right there. Yeah. So the next the next phase of the Typhlosion raid will be the 23rd of April. We're running over that weekend. So we'll finish on the 23rd. Now, we'd be due to get an announcement for the next seven-star raid on the 24th. Okay. But we know that we're going to get an update, and the Walking Wake and the Iron Leaves raid will be running again, coinciding with that update. Uh So that would make sense that the Iron Leaves Walking Wake raid will be on the 28th of April, coinciding with the update. Potentially, that update could be the one for home. If it's not, I don't know when we're going to get home. I really don't. I have no idea because... Okay, it, I, I feel like they do this update and then it's going to be another month before we get another update. Oh. They're not going to drop another one straight Mate, away. Mate, if they don't drop home, I'm going to be... 
if it's into June, it's crazy. So potentially we'll get some news about it this coming week, I imagine. If not, it will be the week after for sure. Uh, But that won't go break. Iron Leaves Raid coming again. So if you have caught it already, you're not going to be able to catch it again. But if you had issues with Bad Egg or you missed that event when it did drop originally, then it gives you another chance to get those legendary Pokemon, which is quite cool. So that's a nice little thing. And the update hopefully fixes some stuff because none of the updates seem to uh, fix anything. And they were menu, so we'll see. What? Just we'll breaking see. things. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything else other than that, mate. Okay. The uh, the podcast is now on uh, iTunes or Apple Podcasts yes. now. We managed to get it on there. So if you if that's where you go to listen to podcast, you can listen to it on there as well as on Spotify. Um, we could really encourage you to please leave us a review um, on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts because it helps with the ratings. Um, so, you know. Drop us a review, it would mean a lot. So we really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Again, everyone that keeps watching would love it. Um, thank you to everyone who's, who's spoken to me that said they've watched the podcast. Costa, our friend Sam as well, also said that he's watched it as well. It's just like we haven't, you know, we've only done three episodes and we've had some like really good feedback. And, you know, as we've mentioned multiple times, something we've really wanted to do for a long time and we really enjoy it. So yeah. it's got to continue to happen because we love doing this. We love Pokemon. And we might, we might not... Hopefully we'll do more in person, you know, we'll go to more events and stuff. Obviously it's great to see you in person and stuff. So obviously doing it online is cool, but in person is just as good. So, you know, you never know where we might be every week. So <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. No, it's great. The feedback's brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone, for everything, all the interactions and stuff. Keep them coming. And yeah, like Scott says, if you can take a single second or however long it takes, just a few minutes to leave a review on Spotify, it'd be massively helpful. And obviously, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you just so much for the the, the support because this is kind of, if yeah, you want to hold over okay. to Spotify and leave us a review, then even even more. Even better, we love brownie, you guys. Brownie points, yeah. And uh, yeah, we are enjoying it still. So we'll be looking forward to bringing more news next week. And uh, hopefully we have some more updates in regards to Scarlet and Violet DLC stuff, anime stuff, and everything else on top of that. And some more updates with Pokemon Go as well, because that is the hot topic, I feel, at the moment. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah. Well, let's wrap it up, mate. Let's wrap it up. It's been great. It's been great. It's been great. Till next time. Until next time, friends, take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Bye bye. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.